took you seven months of research to recreate the Blenheim bomber. For example, when I um, I've been to, uh, I wanted to go to Malta to a business language school in English. I uh, read a travel guide and saw two sentences about the Blenheim bomber. And these two sentences, it was like a flash in my eyes and I knew I need to go there. Uh, and yes, it really uh, touched my heart. It was my first plane wreck I've ever dived in my life. This deep was hard to dive 40 meters a little bit deeper even, um, and I was so fascinated by this wreck that I decided to make a research what happens to this wreck, what is the history of the wreck, not just on the plane, on the people who were in the wreck, and this makes the story interesting, who was on board, who was the pilot, who was the gunman, who was the navigator, and I finally I found out everything. I wrote to uh, a lot of archives in, in Great Britain, it was a British bomber, and find out that it was gunned down and damaged in Italy, flew back and uh, finally touched down in, in the waters of Malta. And uh, yeah, I could find out uh, with the uh, Air Sea Rescue Diaries uh, what I get uh, finally. What happened at this day, what, uh, what, what, how uh, did the rescue going on and who was on board and all people survived. How did you become a writer traveler? You studied at the Berlin University of Arts and how old were you when you knew you would become a writer traveler? That's a very good question and also difficult to answer. Uh, when I was six years old, uh, six years old, I told everybody in my neighborhood, uh, I, once in my life I will travel to uh, Papua New Guinea and to go on an expedition to the Amazon River. And oh, every, so far away. That's very far away, especially when you grow up in East Germany. This country was locked down, we, are, we were not allowed to travel, like Romanian people were not allowed to travel, just in the East Bloc. But for one reason I knew I would do it. Uh, but I wouldn't say I knew uh, I will be a travel writer one day, but I knew I will travel a lot. How many countries and regions have you visited so far? Uh, countries I can tell you exactly. It's 103 countries now uh, with the status of the United Nations. Uh, I'm very uh, very uh, akribisch and region is difficult to say. It's a question of definition. I would say about 350 regions all over the world. Lucan was an important story for me personally too. Um, as I told you, I grew up in the GDR. We didn't, didn't have so much money to buy good clothes for winter. So as a young boy, I always was cold. Uh, and I developed a fear of cold. Uh, and I tried to find a way to fight those fears. And my way to fight fears is against go against the fear. Uh, f um, fight fire with fire and cold with cold. So I decide to go to Alaska in February. This is the coldest month and make a story about the uh, um, Yukon Quest. The so, uh, Yukon Quest is known as the world toughest sled race in the world. Uh, Mashas go from Alaska uh, to the Yukon territory, uh, alternate to one year this way, next year other way around. And there are temperatures down to minus 50 degrees, and minus 50 degrees is really, really cold. So I bought the best clothes I can get in Germany, but when I arrived in Alaska, people look at me and ask me, hey man, are these uh, your shoes you want to walk down here in Alaska? And I say, yes, yes. And they say, forget it, you will lose your f f feet uh, uh, in half an hour. So I went to an uh, outfitter and buy completely new uh, equipment. Yeah, and what I learned is uh, you can fight your fears, but you need to prepare. And you, then you find a way, if you want to find a way. Do you have any fears? Yes, I think everybody has fears, and fears are necessary uh, to survive. It's a, it's a tool given by nature to avoid uh, danger. Do you go beyond your own limits? It's yeah. that what makes you tick? Yes, uh, when, when you want to uh, go uh, last frontiers, uh, like in Alaska or desert, or you make a dangerous wreck diving, uh, you need to push your limits. And when you push your limits, of course, it's adrenaline poor. 
Uh, and uh, when you come back from an adventure like this, you are proud uh, to go a little bit further uh, and develop more. I think it's, uh, it's just evolution. I try to push the evolution a little bit. Have you found heaven on earth so far? <laughs> I'm still looking. I've been to some really exceptional places in the world, uh, like Machu Picchu. I could feel positive energy. Um, when I was diving Rapadura in Tenerife, I feel very close to nature. I felt once I felt very uh, close to yeah to something like absolutely luck was was very simple. I was driving a car down uh, Queensland in Australia and turn on the radio and here uh, uh, ACDC was playing and so, and I say wow that's it. Uh, this was uh, close to heaven for me. Maybe it sounds strange strange when you hear ACDC. Um, but there are some places uh, you feel something like absolute luck and when I feel like this, then I feel close to something higher. What do you bring from each country? Uh, of course, first I bring a lot of memories. Uh, second, uh, I bring uh, tons of photos. And third, for material thing, uh, I collect sand from every country. Sand. Memories. Memories. Yes, memories, of course. I bring memories from every travel. Um, I bring memories and it's my job to write it down and uh, spread it out. You publish your travel adventures in some of the most renowned newspapers, Die Zeit or Spiegel. Does verbalizing your stories uh, make wonders in your case? Yeah, on average I have one to two million readers uh, a month. Um, yes, uh, you, you need to have a bunch of good uh, publications. I have it in three countries, in Germany, Austria and, and um, Switzerland and uh, I, I uh, work there for the leading media. Do you believe in destiny? Yeah, I think so. Uh, when, when we start, I, I told you about uh, Papua New Guinea and uh, Amazon River expedition. I knew it when I was six years old. I can't tell you, it was something I kn knew deep in my heart, I knew. Even it was from the objective side not even possible to go but I knew I will go.